Today, we're going to be taking a look at how we can build a fully conversational agent using Anthropic's new Claude 3 Opus model with Voyage AI embeddings and Pinecone Vector Database. We're going to be using all of these services via Langchain, and that is the latest version of Langchain. So we're using it the, I think it's 0.1. 11 at the moment which allows us to put all of this together pretty easily so we're going to jump straight into it now i'm going to be using this notebook here which you can find in the pinecone examples repo and i'm just going to go ahead and click the open in collab button okay once that has opened we're going to go click connect and we're first just going to install all the prerequisites there's a few here that we that we need so the main ones uh, of course the line chain ones we also use the line chain anthropic package here so that we can use the anthropic models and particularly the latest claude 3 models without this we can't use the latest claude 3 models at least with the current versions of line chain community and uh, yeah i think everything else is pretty self-explanatory so i'm going to go ahead and install that that will take a moment to install now, once those have installed, we're going to download a data set. I'm just going to use the AI archive chunked data set uh, as usual. I'm not going to go through too much of this, but the, the bit that we do actually need is, is here. So we're going to be using the Voyage embeddings. Now, Voyage AI is a relatively new AI company that focuses on embedding models at the moment. So we will need to go ahead and grab a API key from them. The URL for that is this. So dash dot voyageai.com slash API keys. Okay, you will need to sign up for an account if you haven't already, or if you have, you just log in. Okay, I see I already have my demo API key here. I'm just gonna copy that and pull that in. Run this and enter the key. Then we should be able to initialize our embeddings here. And now we need to jump across to Pinecone and get another API key. So this is app.pinecone.io, log in. Okay, I'm gonna get my API key from here, copy that and pull it in. Cool, so we have that. Let's go down to here. I'm using Pinecone serverless here. So I'm gonna run that. And first thing I wanna do is just check the embedding size that this model uses so we can see it's 1024 here and we're going to need to use that when we initialize our index so we run into here uh, yep here we're passing in that dimensionality now i've actually already initialized this index so we'll come here and we'll see that my index is already populated uh, if you're running through this for the first time you should see that this will be zero okay now let's come down to here. Uh, this is where you'd be populating your index. So literally, you know, looping through the entire data set, embedding everything and throwing it in there. We add some metadata for the, uh, the actual chunks of text for the source of those chunks and for the title being the archive paper title. Uh, but I am not going to go, I'm not going to run that because I, I already have it in there, uh, but you should expect it to take so here it took me about 12 minutes that is on collab so expect something similar if you have a decent internet connection all right cool so now we need to go into the agent component right we've just we've set up our knowledge base with voyage ai embeddings now we will get into the agent component now our agent is as i mentioned before using a claude 3 opus llm and it will have a tool that it can use to retrieve data, which is the knowledge base that we have set up. So we need to initialize or define that tool. So we're going to call it the archive search tool here. We're using the tool decorator from Langchain agents to define this as a tool. This prompt here, that basically gives our agent a description on when to use this tool and in order to use this tool, it must consume a string and it will output a string. Okay, and, and, and that is it. So we initialize our archive search tool definition there. 
we pass that into a list for tools. If we had multiple tools, of course, we would have, you know, you know, we might have some other search tool or something in there as well, but we just have one. So I'm going to run that and let's just have a look at what this will actually look like when our agent is using it. So if we have this query, can you tell me about Llama 2? Our agent is going to run the tool using archive search run and then pass in this tool input parameter. Okay. So it would look like this. So it would use the tool like this and this is the output that it would get. Okay. These are the context that we've returned. Now we're using anthropic models here and anthropic models, they work very well with what is called an XML agent. An XML agent, it's using a slightly different format to other agents in that we one have the input defined like this and we also have tool usage defined like this so using these xml tags so we need to first initialize our prompt for that so i'm going to use from the long chain um, hub harrison has put together this xml agent convo prompt so i'm going to initialize that Okay, and you can see that's defining, that's the way that we want the agent to use that XML format here. We have observations uh, and then final answer is being instructed to provide a final answer using, again, these XML tags. Okay, now what we also need to do is initialize our anthropic chat LLM. This is slightly different. So now we're using the Langchain Anthropic package rather than I think before we were using something like Langchain.community or sorry, it would be Langchain underscore community dot anthropic dot chat models or something along those lines. Now we are using the Langchain Anthropic library directly and we need to do that in order to use the Claude 3 Opus model. Uh, if we use the old method and try and use this we're going to get an error something along the lines of the messages format is incorrect so we do need to use this we do need a anthropic api key so let's go and get that we go to console.anthropic.com i'm going to go to get api keys i will create a new key uh, we're going to call this rag demo and i'm just going to paste that key into here Okay, cool. Uh, one thing you can do here if you would like faster response times, you can use Sonnet rather than Opus. But for now, I think we're pretty good. Uh, so we've initialized that. Uh, we have a few intermediate steps that we need in order to uh, basically support the XML format that this agent requires. Uh, so we, we add that and also convert the tool names into the format again that we need for this agent and then what we do is we initialize the inputs to our agent here okay so uh, we have our inputs that is how everything is being uh, pulled into the agent pipeline and they are piped into our prompt transformation here which we defined with the convert tools up there then they are piped in to the LLM. The LLM will stop whenever we hit either tool input or final answer, like the ending tags. You can see that here. And then the output from that is piped into our XML out agent output parser so that we get you know, like a, a nice format at the end there that we can actually work with. So that is kind of like our agent flow. Then we need to pass our agent flow as an agent into our agent executor alongside our tools uh, and then we we can either say verbose is true or false it's, it's kind of up to you um, just so that we can see everything i'm going to say it's true it will just print out a ton of stuff essentially now let's try our agent for now there's going to be no chat history we'll add that um, after in a moment so let's try so it's using the archive search tool my question is can you tell me about llama 2 so it's, it's good it should do the context that it got back are the same as what we saw before. Okay, so it's this blue bit here, they're the return context. 
and then we get our final answer that actually did take a little bit of time there 36 seconds so we get a final answer here and we can actually read it here as well so llama 2 is a large language model developed by meta ai good code llama is a version of llama 2 i uh, um, yeah it's, it's all good all good all good okay cool i mean i mean that all looks pretty good i think yeah i'm there's nothing weird there what we now might want to do okay so right now we don't have that chat history which means our model our agent is stateless can't refer to previous interactions so what we need to do is add those previous interactions and a way of maintaining the state of the conversation over multiple interactions so we're going to be using conversational memory object or conversational buffer window memory object from uh, Langchain. So we initialize that. And at the moment, our conversational memory is of course empty because we, we haven't added anything to it yet. So what we can do is use the add user message and add AI message methods to add uh, some memory or messages into that. So now if we print that out, we can see that we have a human message, AI message, and, and that is it. We've only had those two messages so far. So let's see how we can feed that into our into our XML Claude 3 agent. Uh, so we can't send these messages into the agent directly. Instead, we need to pass a string in this format, okay, human and AI. So we're going to create a new function here, memory to string, that takes our conversational buffer window memory, retrieves those messages, and then formats them into that format that we need. So with human and AI, and returns a string of that. So let's run this and let's see what we get when we print that out. Okay, so we get human, AI. Cool, looks good. Now, what we want to do is rather than, you know, cause we're gonna have to do this code every time where we're, you know, we're taking or we're invoking our agent and then doing this. So rather than just you know, repeating that every time, let's wrap that all into a single function called chat. And we'll use this to call our agent and also maintain our conversation state. So, okay, we have our agent executor invoke as we did before. We're passing in our conversational memory. And then after that, we are adding the previous interactions to our conversational memory for any future interactions. So we run that and let's see what we get. Okay, so what I'm doing here We've already spoken about Llama 2 with the model. We're asking about Llama 2. But now I'm asking a question that doesn't specify that I'm talking about Llama 2. Okay, I'm, I'm saying, was any red teaming done with the model? I don't say Llama 2 at all here. So the model needs to be able to look at those previous interactions in order to understand that I'm actually asking about Llama 2 and in order to perform the search with Llama 2 in there. Because if you just do a search with red teaming the model, the results are not going to be specific to Llama 2. So fortunately, the model actually handles this pretty nicely. And you can see that the input it gives to the tool here is Llama 2 red teaming. So it's, it's looking at those previous interactions correctly and pulling in that information. And we see in blue the results that we're getting. And we see that after conducting red team exercises, we ask participants uh, who had also participated in Llama 2 chat exercises to also provide a qualitative assessment of safety capabilities of the model. Okay, so you can see that uh, seems pretty relevant. So let's come down here and have a look at the final answer that they got or that the model produced. So it said, yes, Meta AI conducted red teaming exercises on Llama 2 and Code Llama models. They conducted three red teaming exercises with 25 Meta employees, including domain S experts in responsible AI, malware development, and offensive security engineering. And you can see, okay, I think, you know, there's more information here. It all, I think it all looks pretty good to be honest. So let's have a look at the summary. Meta AI did conduct red teaming to proactively identify risks in those models, uncovering some potential issues, especially with ambiguous prompts, whilst also putting the risks in perspective. All right. I mean, looks pretty good. That's a good answer. Actually, probably one of the best answers I've seen from, you know, running this sort of test. So yeah, that, that is how we would put together a conversational agent that has access to 
external memory using our knowledge base and is also able to refer to past interactions in order to formulate responses and have that more sort of conversational nature. I mean, it's a pretty simple version, but it works pretty well. So yeah, I hope this is uh, useful in just kind of putting together a, you know, your own Claude 3 Opus or Claude 3 Sonnet RAG agents. But for now, that's all I have on Claude 3 agents. So I will leave it there. I hope this has been useful and interesting. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you again in the next one. Bye.